after getting more comfortable piloting my drone and working out some kinks, I finally decided to work at taking some cinematographic shots. This time, I truly wanted to see footage I would watch and say, as a filmmaker, I would want to pay money for these shots. If it's your first time watching my videos, welcome to my channel. I am Odelia Firebird, your storyteller, and I am here to share my passion for art, adventure, and living a full life. If you like my content, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. What I've learned so far is that drone shots are a lot shorter than the visual distance actually traveled by the drone. Also, the wider the shot, the lengthier the shot needs to be in order to be usable. Much like sending a bottle into space, your drone will feel as if it traveled something like 50 meters for every second on screen. This means you will have to be comfortable sending your drone quite far for you to get a sellable shot. In attempting to do so, I actually lost my drone. Don't worry, I got it back. But for a moment, both my sweetie and I had a slight heart attack. As you can see, our starting point was set high up in the mountain. We both wanted to get some shots closer to the ground in front of us. So I made the drone go down the slope. I can only guess that the mountains and the angle it was in interfered with the remote's radio waves, and the image on the screen froze. I tried desperately to get the drone higher up in order to reconnect, but it did not seem to be responding, and I could not tell where the drone was in the vast, whitewashed desert landscape. If it weren't for the send back home feature, the drone would have been lost. I guess there was enough of a flimsy connection to send it back to us. We were so relieved to see it appear high above our heads. I wish I could say this was the first and only time this happened. Unfortunately, it wasn't. However, that was the one time I really thought it gone, as the remote and drone connection had been lost. And that's why the send back home feature is your best friend. You can bet we didn't try our luck twice and left the area. Next stop, the beach. The beach at sunset is a great place to shoot some footage. I assume that due to the dimming light, the drone would be easier to lose sight of. However, the flashing light of the drone was actually visible, making it easier to keep sight of the drone. We were lucky that the sea was calm and the winds were soft, making it easy to pilot the drone without strong wind warnings bleeping every few seconds on the app. It was one of the easiest drone piloting I've done. There were no roads or power lines to worry me. I could easily send the drone far without worrying too much. There were no connection issues with the remote. It was smooth sailing all the way. Excuse the pun. As a filmmaker, drone footage is a dream. I remember filming my second film. I would have loved to have a crane shot at the end of the movie for the ending scene. Unfortunately, the cost of cranes were too great and technology for this drone was still decades away. Kids have it so easy these days and they don't appreciate the tech they have enough. I still remember the day my niece asked me how I can't believe I even have to specify that, as there was no Facebook Messenger at the time. I told her that that program did not exist when I was a child, so the question wasn't even an issue. <laughs> it was a way different world. As a young filmmaker, I would have loved to have the technology we have today at my disposal. The camcorder I used back then was one of the first digital video cameras of the time. Now. Any smartphone can do better. As great as technological advancements are, it's making people expect too much out of too little. Producers don't want to spend a dime. 
People expect pixel level animations and Harry Potter level effects out of any self made basement movie. The reality is, making movies takes a lot of time, expensive equipment, and highly qualified technicians. Without even mentioning the hours of work, number of shots taken, and trials and error involved in the process. One of my favorite YouTube channels is Viva la Dirt League. <laughs> They're really great. If you look at the number of people working on each of their videos, you'll see they have a full production crew, which is more than most of us can have, especially if you're starting, because it's all about budget. You can't start without budget, and you certainly can't get the budget without starting. That's how the GoPro 9 got me back into making videos. I was old school, making films with a minimal crew, actors, and script. Now it's just me and my tech, filming all the wonderful things I come across as I travel. So here I am, years later, investing in myself so I can continue making videos and pursue my passions. I am so grateful for today's technology, allowing me to do just that. If you've enjoyed my content and want to join me on my adventures as I rediscover my love for filmmaking, sharing with you every step I take. I would love for your support. Please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. It's a small gesture that helps me a long way. If you want to take it a step further, there's a link in the description below you can use to donate an amount of your choosing. It's directly to my PayPal account, which will remove any additional charges from other services. It can be a few dollars, the price of a coffee, and it will go a long way into helping me continue making videos. So thank you in advance for your support. Till next time, have a wonderful week.